when I was at Walter Reed and I first got a backup on, on two legs, the first time I used a, a prosthetic, where I took my first steps for the second time, a moment that I'll never forget. And, you know, you're in this clinic and you're walking along these parallel bars and it's just something so you can hold on to and your prosthetist is making adjustments. He's kind of giving you some like basic coaching and kind of how to make the knee work and stuff. And you're kind of, I'm just going back and forth, just down this one, this one strip, boom, boom, boom. And my confidence is building and I'm starting to loosen my grip on these bars. And I, you know, I'm feeling like, I mean, I got this. This isn't, this isn't that difficult. I can do this. And then the inevitable happens, which is you wipe out and you hit the floor and you're down there and you're looking up, you know, my father was there. My now wife was there. My doctors are there. My therapist is there. And I'm looking up at them kind of like what just happened. And my prosthetist was like, all right, now get up. And that was it. And getting up from the ground literally is much different with one leg than with two. So I'm literally there just like fumbling this thing around. I have no idea what I'm doing. And eventually I get myself back vertical again. And I said, what happened, man? Like I, I had a pretty good stride. Like what, like what I do wrong? And he's like, this exercise only ends one way. You're going to keep going until you hit the ground. This is done by design. And we give you the guidance of stand up. And while these guys are not psychiatrists or psychologists or behavioral health docs or cognitive docs, they're prosthetists. In that moment, they enable you, they equip you with both physical capability and mental capability to your point. Not just can you physically get up off the ground because you're going to continue to fall a whole bunch as you try to figure out how to do this thing, but mentally getting back up after getting knocked down. You're going to continue to fail at this. And they were not about to rob me of that training opportunity. Yeah. So that was my kind of my first segue into that experience of, of failure in front of people that I want to impress and people who care about me. And very slowly over time, I just became more and more comfortable with, with failure. Now, when you're at Walter Reed, you're in this bubble. Yeah. You're in a bubble and you're surrounded by people, especially the time that I was there in 2013. I mean, Walter Reed was packed with service members, dealing with a variety of injuries. Not only did that give me an amazing gift of perspective, because I mean, you look at, I'm looking at quadruple amputees that are getting after it. I'm looking at guys that have such severe traumatic brain injury that they don't recognize their wife and their kids. When you're surrounded by shit like that daily, this is a paper cut. This becomes nothing. So it put me in this position of, oh, like, let's go, right? Let's go. And so failure at Walter Reed when I was there was very easy to do because I was around a, a whole bunch of people who were failing at things constantly. Yeah. And they're there to support you. You're now joining, rejoining a team that has their own doubts because no one has ever done this before. Well, that's where it got different. So when I left Walter Reed after a year and I was one of like the guys in the, in the rehab gym, like getting after it, right? I go back, I go to Walter Reed. I go from being kind of at the top of this mountain in terms of like physicality and capability in this Walter Reed bubble where, where failure is not only extremely common, but it's necessary. And now I'm back at Bragg. Now I'm back with my teammates. Now I'm back with able-bodied, savage Green Berets. And I just went from the top to the absolute bottom in terms of capability. And it totally shook me. And I was like, oh man, I cannot be perceived as weak in front of these people. And these are guys I consider brothers. We've been through a lot together. Guys that I love genuinely and who love me. I cannot let them even get a glimpse of me in a weakened state. I need to earn their trust. I need them to know that I'm capable. So I tried to almost hide the fact that I was an amputee. I'd have like long pants on all the time. I would never take my leg off, my prosthetic off in front of anybody else. The, the mere image in my mind of people seeing me in that makeup, just, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Like, no, no, no. I need to be seen like everyone else here. Mm -hmm. And we're in the gym and we're training and, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the things with my teammates right alongside me. And at one point it was a long day. We had like two, three training sessions and I'm, my, my leg is just hammered to shit and I'm hobbling around. Whenever I needed to take my leg off to kind of let it air out or let it dry off, I would go to like a closed off room, do that, put myself back on, reconfigure, and then go back out to where everyone else was. And one of my teammates came up to me and he's like, hey man, why don't you just take that thing off and like let it breathe or just like take a minute, like you're 
clearly in pain and you're not doing yourself any favors right now by this. And of course I knew my reasoning was I don't want you to see me as a one-legged guy. I want you to see me as a, just another SF guy. And he goes, you do know, we all know you only have one leg. Like you're not fooling anybody by this. You're just, you're, you're causing yourself unnecessary damage and you're regressing what you're able to be doing based off of pride and ego. He goes, you know, we all know you only have one leg, right? And I'm like, shit, yeah, you're kind of right, you do. And that was like a big spark for me, yeah. you know, because it was just a quick in passing, you know, he drops that on me, a guy that I love and respect. I was like, you know what, you're right. So I just became much more cool and comfortable with being vulnerable in front of these guys. And then what I noticed, the magic happens, which often happens on the backside of most fears is when you can get past it. That's where the magic sometimes exists is when I would do that, I would let people see me for what was really me. And you can take this literally or metaphorically because it's true either way. It actually began to uplift people around me just that much more, right? Not only is it just that much more obvious that we got a guy with one, with one leg over here that's getting after it, but he's willing to expose who he is. He's being vulnerable in front of us. He trusts us and he's not making any excuses about this. He's still getting here, getting after it. I was watching these other guys elevate their game. And then that, while phenomenal for us collectively, for me, selfishly, I began to thrive off of that. And I just kept wanting to double down and double down and double down. And seeing that kind of impact on those that I care for was, was pretty powerful, man.